So when you hear, oh, someone used AI, you need to think a lot more critically about how that can be used. This isn't a game. This isn't a war about being who's right or who's wrong or who's good or who's bad. This is about growing and maturing in your own skill and learning new skill sets and finding a place where they can be fitting to your own complex view of the world and your own morality here. This isn't supporting theft, right? That's a very simple minded way to view this. And I say that with complete confidence when you hear that someone used a tool and you associate it with everything else. It's extremely immature. And it's part of why I'm making this video because I feel this needs to be said. And a lot of people are fearful about saying this. Hey guys, my name's Lola Holiday and welcome to Cover Art, a series on my channel where I cover art related news and controversy. And today we're talking about huge internet artist Ergo Josh, who I'm sure you've probably heard of if you've clicked on this video. Um, but anyway, Ergo Josh is a digital artist. I'm showing you some of his beautiful works on screen now. And I'm told that a big appeal of his channel is apparently he's talked a lot throughout his career about the progress of grinding his art skills from the ground up and how much work and dedication has gone into him learning anatomy and digital art and he also makes inspirational videos talking about common difficulties creatives might experience. Altogether all of this has amassed him a huge following of 739 thousand subscribers on YouTube so it seems like he's pretty well respected in the online art community. So why has he recently landed himself in controversy? Well, two weeks ago, Josh made a community post about AI art, which received a lot of negative feedback from his audience. I'm not going to read the whole statement because it is so long, but please feel free to pause and read it. But I'm just going to read the first few sentences and then summarize the rest. So basically he said to his audience, would you be interested in a video where I recommend some safe, strategic ways to incorporate AI and other helpful digital tools into my workflow. Over the years, I've found that there comes a point where you don't need all the skills to do something. You just have to have a solid idea in your head and a solid understanding of what you already know how to do. In other words, for illustration, you need to know what looks good and what tools and skill sets are typically required to achieve it. In the rest of this statement, he goes on to talk about what skills he feels he has, such as anatomy and having a quote unquote good eye for 3D space, but he doesn't feel confident drawing hair in a believable 3D environment. So he discloses he's been prompting the AI mid journey and he's used it in a recent illustration process. He says, I say all of this to express how much work, skill and experience goes into what looks like simple tracing to the untrained eye. When my drawing is finished, it will look like I can draw a lot better than I can. It will look 100% organic, because it technically is, however a newbie won't get the same results that I have. So let's just take a look at some of the comments underneath this community post, shall we? AI in art is theft. Zero interest. Didn't realise you were into the plagiarism machine. Cold world out there. Unsubscribed. Every advice and encouragement video you've made has helped me grow as an artist, to become someone who grows learning from others, not stealing from them. This is so sad, you're such a talented person. Please don't resort to using tools that not only scrape works without consent, but are also built to mock and devalue artists. No, not ever. There's thousands of references you can use instead of using something that steals from other artists. Really disappointed. I thought you thrived on the challenge of art improvement. I get what you mean about AI serving as a tool, but in this case it's literally solving a creative and technical problem I thought you enjoyed exploring and sharing with us. This is how we allow the technology to dumb us down. Doesn't seem like a great way to use it. AI isn't ethical. AI uses the work of unconsenting artists to generate results. There are no ethical ways to incorporate it into your workflow. Immensely disappointed in you. So clearly Josh's community wasn't happy with this and I think that's especially worsened by the brand he's created for himself where he's talked about diligently putting in the blood, sweat and tears to acquire the skills he has and he's done tutorials and inspired a community of artists who are motivated to keep working hard because they've seen how much he's improved and they want to be like him so it's definitely out of line with this persona that he's built up and I'll go more into the question of why exactly 
do a lot of artists dislike, AI image generators later in the video, and my opinions on the situation as well, so stick around. But Josh has actually gone ahead and released this video two weeks later despite the backlash, um, where he actually talks about the process of this illustration. And the video is titled, How Real Artists Use AI. So let's talk about it. Today, we're going to do a little process breakdown for my newest illustration called What the Meek See. This is mostly in part because of how many people freak out the moment they hear that AI is used. And the goal here is to show you how it can be used in an effective way without infringing on anyone else's rights, without losing or giving up your own creativity and your own artistic license as an artist, and how to actually have it benefit you without limiting yourself, how to only have it add to you. So this is the final result that you're seeing here. This illustration took me over 111 hours completed entirely in Procreate. 111 hours. That is some riot splash art level of work. So I selected 69 slides, just so happened to be 69, covering the entire process from the automatic generated time lapse and procreate to explain the process. So this first slide is after about an hour or two of sketching. And what I did here was use one reference. It all started with one reference that I wanted to study with a woman holding her head up with her hand like this. Here, you see quite a significant change because now I'm like, okay, I want to start refining the anatomy more. So I found some photo reference of hands from various places. Okay, so, so far it's very run of the mill. We've just got some photo references, but the AI is about to begin. At this point, I used some reference that had been generated by AI by other artists, as well as my own intuition for all the faces I've drawn to construct this. And it really is no different from me looking at reference of, let's say, Ilya Kushinov, like I've done many, many times in the past to construct this face and have it have an appealing look with the shape of the eyes that I wanted. But again, I didn't generate any reference myself. I didn't overlay any references or include any AI in this illustration at this point whatsoever. That is AI reference number one. This is where I start exploring, well, what if I make the hair a lot more wild and vibrant and flowy at this point, right? I still have not used AI whatsoever other than to look at some of the random AI images that have come up on Pinterest. I start sketching loosely what this could be like. Here you see me going even further using references that I found from other artworks online, especially some of those AI artworks for coming up with this hair, but also looking at the hair from the initial reference. So more AI hair references. I felt like I needed some help. I knew that if I could use AI to generate something similar to what I was trying to come up with, just floating hair in a abyss or a void, then I could use that to guide me. Here is where we finally have AI being used. So I generated several images in mid-journey of hair just flowing about in space and sometimes it would actually generate a character's head which is not what I wanted so I would erase that and so I brought it in I cut it up I cropped it I would use the liquify tool and I would try to shape the hair in a flow that was similar to what I wanted and what I did was I started to trace some of the basic shapes here now a lot of you freaked out hearing oh my god he traces but as an experienced artist when I trace something I know how to trace it in a way that still adheres to my own skill and artistic intuition for shape design I'm not gonna go in here like a newbie would and trace every single little thread and stick to the lines that were there no I'm going to actually blur my vision a bit and find the bigger shapes that I find appealing here we're just not gonna get into the whole tracing thing. That's a whole other topic that is very controversial in itself. I had searched for a lot of hair images on Pinterest before that you'll see in this video that helped but didn't give me this expression or feeling that I wanted. You can see clearly this basically doesn't even look like I had used AI in the image at all. I used it as a tool to help guide me. Many people said, oh, you could have done this, you could have done that. Yeah, I could have also made this person have an alligator head with teeth. I could have done an infinite number of things, but I chose to use the tools that I had available. <laughs> Why does he sound so angry? This isn't supporting theft. Right? That's a very simple-minded way to view this, and I say that with complete confidence, when you hear that someone used a tool and you associate it with everything else. It's extremely immature, and it's part of why I'm making this video, because I feel this needs to be said, and a lot of people are fearful about saying this. I remain the artist in control here. I am the one making the decisions, and that is what separates me from someone who uses AI to just shit out artwork, for lack of sorry for that crude term, and just say that they're theirs. I'm a director here. It's like I'm, a, I'm directing a film. I have an idea of what I want, and I'm stopping at nothing until it gets to that place that I want. He then just talks for a long time about how he did the hair, and then redid it, and redid the face. Um, like a million times, and how he brought in a perspective grid anyway. And I used an AI generated image of an elf boy, and I liked how the ear looked in that image that I saw on Pinterest, so I just copied it. Could have been another artist painting that I looked at to copy, it made no difference, right? But because I say that it's AI, all of a sudden it's problematic. And that's where we're at now with the final illustration. So I hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful and useful, and I hope that you see now that AI can be used in a way that doesn't infringe on any individual artist's uh, copyright. This is all my work, clearly. And it would be extremely difficult for you to create this from AI. The way she's holding the hair strands in her hands, the way she's crouching, the perspective, the hair, and the style of it. It's unique to me, and I'm very proud of it. And I followed the intuition from the very beginning of this work, which looked nothing like this, right? So please share this with everyone that likes art and is concerned with AI art so that you can see that there is a lot more to this discussion and that we shouldn't be so divisive and calling each other names and villains and trying to say someone is an artist or isn't an artist just because they mention that they use a certain tool that you don't agree with. I'm not happy with that and I want to hold everyone to a higher standard so that we can respect each other more in this community and move further and have more artists because the more artists in the world, I believe the better the world will be. Okay, so that is the general gist of the video. Um, but what has Josh said since the video came out? Let's see, he made some statements on his Instagram as well. The people announcing their unsubscription after watching my latest YouTube video, but are 100% coming back to hate every time I post something for the next few months. 
but seriously I mad appreciate those of you who have offered your support and words of comfort it's definitely tough and I obviously only show a limited side of myself online I'm still human even though I've been well prepared for the intensity of the harsh feedback I'd get from sharing my views I don't make these videos to defend myself but to make a statement for the majority that is still undecided or pondering about their own views on AI it's a rough time and a controversial topic and the like dislike ratio although still very positive in my favor clearly shows that I also appreciate those of you who disagree and have left your thoughts many people will read them and it will help us all move forward in a big way so what do the commenters think well they hate it don't they of course they do um here's some comments feel free to pause and read them there's some interesting thoughts there and while i show them i'll talk through my opinion so first of all artists generally dislike ai image generators for the following reason um which is that they spent a lot of time improving their skill because although some people believe this to be the case um it's actually not true that some people are just magically born amazing artists every artist works on their craft for years. They then post their work online, maybe as part of a portfolio to get a job in the art industry, um, just to share it, to show appreciation for media they like through fan art, uh, to make friends, to grow a community. And then companies scraped it all off the internet, used it to train their generative diffusion models. They did not gain the consent of the creators to use their work as training data for these purposes. Um, now companies like Midjourney, profit a lot off of these models artists are actually losing their jobs they've spent years building up their skills for just because the AI is cheaper it can render better than most artists let's be honest um, I made a video on artists losing their jobs and specific examples of that a while ago um, but it feels especially unfair considering those skilled artists didn't consent to donating their work for free to the programs that are then replacing them um, on top of that Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, just social media in general is becoming flooded with AI art. It makes it harder for artists to find their community. Um, I now find myself looking at certain art styles and just assuming it's AI because there's certain styles that get generated the most. So interestingly, and I think this is such an important point as well, um, is Midjourney always said, oh, we don't have any way of knowing whose art was scraped it was just millions of random images from the internet um, just loads of training data but then this list got leaked so a 24 page document of 16,000 artists with noticeable big name artists um, artists working at Nintendo etc um, so that showed that Midjourney had actually refined its selection for scraping and was using primarily this targeted specific pool of artists who I guess they deemed high enough quality to improve the model. So of course Josh's artist audience is going to be upset when he suggests that they should consider integrating AI into their toolkit and he's shouting out Midjourney, kind of encouraging its use and making comments in the video about how this 100% isn't infringing on anyone's rights. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to word vomit some thoughts that I personally had during this situation. First thought is what what are these random strands of hair that aren't connected to the rest of the hair this is such an ai hallmark when i look at a photo and i see a random floating bit of hair i'm like yep it's ai and i'm not sure if it was intentional that he left that in but he talked a lot in the video about his artist intuition um and he spent 111 hours on this and i just don't know how he didn't notice that he left that in and didn't fix it maybe it's intentional i just don't see why but um anyway other thoughts i have are that i think josh is a very skilled artist he's clearly a smart man very like introspective i think the sketch he was working on towards the hair initially was looking good and i think it's kind of a shame that he lost confidence it felt like he didn't have the confidence in his own ability to complete that and work it out i made a video a while ago where i did a one hour per day art challenge and i forced my myself out of my comfort zone and it was really 
um like healing in a way if that makes sense but I was avoiding backgrounds and full bodies even though I wanted to draw them because I convinced myself that I couldn't do them and I suppose subconsciously it was like if I attempt this and it goes wrong I'm gonna feel bad about myself so I'm just gonna stick to um bust up or portrait but then I actually did it and I realized I was more capable than I thought um, and you know, Josh clearly knows what he's doing a lot more than I do as well. And I don't know how to phrase this, but I just wouldn't want him to continue to rely on the AI when he feels like he's unsure because I feel like he's clearly gone through so much development with his work and I feel like he could have done it, but the confidence with gaining those new skills only comes with practice. And I think by just cutting out parts of the process that you're not 100% comfortable with by getting the AI and tracing it. I kind of think it might almost become a point where if you're using it in your process enough it starts to become a crutch. If you want to get better at drawing something then you generally gotta draw it. Um, the next thought might be kind of controversial, okay, so a lot of people in the comments were sad he used AI reference images. They said, why couldn't you have just searched harder and found another reference or used your imagination? But the thing is, there's this challenge going around, you might have seen it, where people find some AI art online and then they say, this is soulless, let's fix it. Um, the AI steals from artists, so I'm going to steal from the AI and then they redraw the AI reference image into their own style and yeah they change it a bit if anything is whack about it like if it has six fingers obviously they change that and at the end of the day it's in a different style and they drew it from scratch but they did just fully one-to-one -one reference this AI image and they don't get backlash so What's the difference in morality? Is the difference in using AI images as reference that it's okay if you didn't know it's AI, um, but not okay if you did know, and then if you did know, is it okay if you found it on the internet, but then it's just not okay if you hit the generate button yourself and you made that AI art. So I have questions for you guys about the situation um, to answer in the comment section, I'm just interested. So are you guys against AI in the integration of the artistic process or not? And if you're against it, do you have any leniency on that view? Is there ever any condition where it would be acceptable to you? What's your opinion on people knowingly using AI images as reference? And does it make a difference to you whether they found that reference on Pinterest or whether they themselves intentionally generated it? And what's your opinion on AI images in general? If someone made an AI that helps you with part of your processes, for example, like an AI that cleaned up your sketch into line art for you, or automatically helped to paint your flat colours neatly, would you ever use something like that? And if you are previously a subscriber, a supporter of Josh, what's your reaction to this video and are you still going to be supporting him going forwards? So I've made a video recently about AI speed paints, so if you haven't heard of that please give it a watch because we'll probably be seeing that around on social media soon, so I think artists need to be aware. Um, and here on my channel I talk a lot about AI art and updates on advancements and important controversies so it would mean so much to me if you think this video was well edited, researched, produced, it takes hours um, to produce these videos so if you could support a small artist by commenting, um, even just a robot emoji to show that you got to the end if you don't want to contribute to um, a discussion and write an essay in the comments um, or just liking or subscribing if you want to stay in the loop, um, always more to come and I want to talk more about advancements in AI music and animation next as well so stick around if you're interested to find out more about that when the time comes and thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video if you're still here and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!